what units should I make? This is a very important question in just about every single Age of Empires 2 match. Now, when I was younger, I answered this question with whatever units look the coolest. And that's probably why my Byzantine army always looked like this. Yeah, I had a lot to learn. However, fortunately since then, I have learned that the best units to make in a given situation are the units that will defeat your opponent. And I like to measure this by seeing how efficient they are in certain areas. I think that efficiency in Age of Empires 2 is something that many players are very interested in, hence all the jokes about exhausted farms and badly placed mills, and situations where people really look into increasing the efficiency of their economy. However, I think that the efficiency of your army is equally as important, and in a deathmatch game it is probably more important. So that is what this video is going to be about. Now, there are many different ways to look at combat efficiency in Age of Empires 2. However, I am going to look at three main methods, I suppose you could say, of looking at combat efficiency. The first method, and probably the most popular, is to look at combat efficiency of units from a cost standpoint. When you look at a unit's cost efficiency, you'll see how much damage output and survivability you get relative to the cost of that unit. If that explanation of cost efficiency sounds confusing, that's because it is a confusing explanation. So instead, try to think about it this way. There are two different types of units. One unit has more HP, it has more attack, and it has more armor. However, it costs way more than the second type of unit. A fair test between these two units would have an equal value of resources spent on both sides, because what we are measuring here is the cost of the unit and not a population size of the unit. What this means is that the statistically weaker unit may very well be the better choice if it costs way less than the statistically stronger unit. Now, this does bring up a very important question, and what that question is, how do you determine the value of resources spent on a certain unit? You need to answer this because different resources in Age of Empires have different values. So for example, in many situations, gold will be more valuable than wood and food. There are really two different ways that you'll see people do these types of tests. The first way would be from a total resource standpoint. In other words, gold, food, and wood are all valued equally when looking at the performance of a unit. This type of cost efficiency will probably be the most useful in situations where getting gold is not that much of a problem, so suppose in a game with a lot of trade, or in situations where you're making units that are very resource intensive on one of the other two types of resources. So for example, if you're going to be making a lot of elephants, you'll probably want to use total cost because their food cost is incredibly high. For me personally though, I normally do not use this type of cost efficiency in my tests or when I'm making that many decisions. And the main reason for this is because I find it relatively easy to raid your opponent's gold when compared to other resources, and because I do play lots of games where gold is way more valuable than the other two types of resources. So instead, oftentimes you'll look at the cost efficiency of a unit only from the gold spent on a unit. If you watch previous videos where I've compared different units, you'll notice that I'll do this based on the gold spent for both armies. And the reason I do this is because I'm looking at this from a gold cost efficiency standpoint. Looking at cost efficiency, whether it's in total resources spent or in gold spent, can be useful in just about every stage of a game. So for example, in the beginning stages of a deathmatch game, it's important to look at how much gold you're spending and to make sure that you don't run out. 
or in the ending stages of a deathmatch game, you'll need to save that because there's not going to be that much gold left on the map before too long. However, I think that there are many situations where, if you focus solely on cost efficiency, that will make your army weaker than it actually could be, because you might not be buying the best units. So in this situation, you should be actually looking at population efficiency. When I look at the efficiency of units based on population, what I'm doing is I'm looking at their damage output and their survivability relative to how many units they are. In other words, if I was to do a test between two different types of units, I would ignore cost and instead I would equalize the amount of units there would be in that test because I am looking at this from a total amount of units there are standpoint. If we go back to our example where there is a statistically stronger unit and a statistically weaker unit, the stronger unit would win regardless of the cost. Now you might be wondering, why are we all of a sudden ignoring cost? And the answer is that in many situations you'll have a large enough army and a large enough economy so that way you'll be able to field whatever units basically you want to. However, in those situations, you'll have to keep in mind that you have limited population slots, and you need to use these as effectively as possible in order for your army to be as strong as possible. This would be a situation in which you'll want to make your army based not on cost efficiency, but instead on population efficiency. I have found that these situations oftentimes arise during team games and occasionally in one versus one games. Basically, in any situation where all three resources are coming in at a fast enough rate, so that way you'll be able to make whatever units you want, so then you'll instead need to make sure that you're using your population slots as efficiently as possible. Now this does bring up an important question though. What do I do if my only counters against an enemy unit are counters that are not population efficient but are cost efficient. My general advice is that if that counter is a soft counter, so example if you're Ethiopians and you have arbalests versus an enemy's heavy cavalry archers, it's probably best not to go with the soft counter and instead try to find a hard counter. An example of a hard counter might be halberdiers versus paladins, because even though paladins are population efficient versus halberdiers, that's such a hard counter that you're going to drastically decrease the amount of paladins that your opponent has, and it would be worth it. However, in this situation, if you had camels, that would still be the better option. Something interesting to remember is that as the population limit goes up, population efficiency becomes less important. So for example, in a game where you have a population limit of 200, you might only be able to field an army that is around 100 units, and as such, you'll need to make sure to use each and every one of those slots effectively. On the other hand, in a 400 population game, it's going to take a lot longer to get to that point, and in all honesty, other types of efficiency might be more important. Now, one does hear a whole lot about both cost efficiency and population efficiency. But I think that another type of efficiency that you don't hear a whole lot about would be production speed efficiency. And what this is, is how good a unit is measured by its damage output and its survivability relative to the production speed of that unit. Now, you might be wondering, why would this be important? And the answer is because in many situations, both population and cost will not be that important. Think about the beginning of a deathmatch game, the first five minutes. You do have finite resources, but you have a lot of them. And you do have a finite population, but you start at the very bottom, so it's not going to be that important to look at. Instead, what you'll need to look at is the speed at which you can get a strong army out when compared to an opponent. So, for example, if I'm playing as the Goths with my super fast, ultra fast, amazingly fast speed barracks versus a polar like the Koreans, the Koreans might have a better army from a population efficiency standpoint once we get up to 200 pop, 
but at the beginning of a deathmatch game, that doesn't really matter because I'm going to get out about 20 Huskarls by the time they get out about two Sea Jaunters. And so the most important part of a production speed efficiency test will be the creation speed of that unit. However, there are some other factors that come into play. Now, if you think about what a production speed efficiency is about, it's about getting as much units out as you can, so that way you can apply pressure as soon as possible, and so that way you can have a surprise factor. If you think about it, what this means is that the movement speed of a unit does affect the production speed efficiency of your army because if a unit is created but yet it's not in the battle because it was too slow to get there, that unit's not going to be helping it. But if you can actually move faster, it will be able to get into the battle sooner and be effective. If you've seen my Mongol overview or my Top 5 Siege Onagers video, you'll understand why I really think this. Come to think of it, the whole reason I added this section about movement speed was just to say, THE MONGOLS HAVE THE BEST SIEGE ONAGERS! Now, having this type of efficiency in your mind is nice and dandy, but you'll do need to know when it's important. I think it's important at the beginning of a deathmatch game for the previously stated reasons, but I also think that it's very important in a situation where you are under siege, because if you can create an army as fast as possible, you'll be able to respond to that siege quicker and sustain as little damage as possible. That's why production speed is so important to me, and in all honesty, it's probably the most important method of efficiency that I like to look at from my playstyle. Because I think that to be a good Age of Empires player, you need to be able to push your advantage as fast as you can. And in many situations, having a direct creation speed or movement speed bonus will greatly affect and help this situation. Now, before I end the video, there are some things I want to explain. The first thing is that all this talk of efficiency is relative to other units. Chuko News are very pop efficient versus champions, but they're not population efficiency versus Huskarls. Huskarls are very cost efficient versus longbowmen, but they are not cost efficient versus elite cataphracts. Efficiency is always relative to what your opponent is making or to another choice that you could have used to deal with those same units. Now, I'm not trying to say that combat efficiency is the only thing you should be looking at when deciding what units to make. You need to see what resources you have in the bank to see what units you can afford, and you should also keep in mind that different micro will make your units more or less efficient depending on how you do it. However, it's really important to examine efficiency because it allows you to inform in-game decisions. So that way, if you might be tempted to make a unit based on cost efficiency in a situation where you should do it based on population efficiency, you'll be able to make the right choice which will help you to win the game. Also, it's important to know about efficiency because most bonuses actually do affect all metrics of efficiency. However, some bonuses, like creation speed bonuses for instance, affect one method of efficiency way more than they affect the other methods of efficiency. And as such, you'll need to know what types of efficiency you should try to go for based on your civilization's bonuses. I know that this video has been a little bit theoretical and maybe difficult to understand, and I'm sorry if it has been. However, I've tried my best to explain this very important concept that will allow you to make the best decisions in any given situation. Think about efficiency when you're playing Age of Empires 2 relative to cost, population, and production speed. I'll see you later, I hope that you have fun, and I hope that this video has been useful. Bye.